Hi guys, uh, I'm starting a new mini-series which shows you how to build a simple yet effective purchase application in Excel. And uh, let's get started. Let's assume we are a toys distributor. And in this initial video, let's assume that we only have one toy, that we're basically just selling one toy. And we have multiple clients. These are our clients and each client got a discount associated with them. And here are the, um, yeah, there's, there's like the, the, the order quantities for the, for the one toy we're selling and the price per unit. Let me just add here per unit for uh, each quantity. So basically if you order one toy, you pay 15 per unit. If you order 10, you, you, you pay 12 per unit and so on. Right. And now what we need, we need to build a small application where I can input the client. I get automatically the discount. Then I input the order quantity and I get automatically the price per unit. And then at the end here, Excel calculates the invoice, which is basically order quantity time price unit, and then take off the discount for that specific customer or client. Right, now we want to input the client as we already have our clients here in a list there's no need to input them you know via the uh, a keyboard what we do is we just create a drop down and the way we do that in Excel I did uh, previously I did a couple of videos on drop downs so if you need any more details on drop downs just refer to those videos what I'm gonna do here I'm just gonna go to data first of all obviously we click in the cell where that drop down is supposed to be go to data data validation data validation and you pick list and then you click into source and you go to data clients and pick the clients you got and there you go so, and now we have a drop down with the various clients you don't have to type in the clients right now we want to have the discount associated with it with each client appear automatically here well and this is a classic case of the VLOOKUP the VLOOKUP function is basically works like a yeah, like a phone book. Let's let's do it, and you can see how it works. Call it up, look up and now the VLOOKUP can be found under all or under lookup and reference, and it's around here because V it's all alphabetically sorted, so V is at the bottom, and there we go. Right now, in a phone book, let's say I'm looking for John Smith. What's my lookup value? I know all I know about this guy is his name, John Smith. I don't know anything else. I need his phone number. What's my lookup? When I open that phone book, what am I looking for? Not his phone number. I don't know that. I'm looking for John Smith. So basically the same thing here with the client. All I know about this client is his name. I need his discount. What am I looking for? What's my lookup value? That's what I know. Basically his name. Right. Now, table array is basically, okay, where's my phone book? My phone book is here, this table. And it's basically these two columns that's all I got now column index number what's my where is my data I mean I am opening that phone book I'm going through this data and what do I want I want the discount now in which column is that discount well the discount is in the second column so I just type in two right now we come to the final thing range lookup here you can either put true or false now what do I put in here well Think about it. We have here the clients. Now, my question is, can a client exist between this client and this client? Well, no, because you either are this client or this client or this client. There's nothing in between. You know, if you, you are either client ABC or DEF or GHI, there's nothing in between. You know, you, you can't be, you know, I'm, I'm half ABC and another half is DEF. There's nothing like that. You're either that or that. So in these cases, what you put here in range lookup is false. Okay, and here we go. And you see MNO has got 0%, that's right. He's got no discount. If you go to ABC, he's got 23%, which is right. Okay, so this is how the VLOOKUP works. And very important is, that's the most important thing with all VLOOKUPs is when you build a table to be used in a VLOOKUP, it's very important that your I'm just going to turn it on again oops here it is 
it's very important that your lookup value, your lookup value, and your first column in your data set is of the same type. What does that mean? Well, what is our what is our first what is our lookup value? It's basically the client's name. That's our lookup value, right? And what's the first column in our data range? In our data set? It's also client names. So that's gotta be identical. If I had a if I had a table or if I if my data set was let's say like that, that wouldn't work. Because what uh, the way the the way that you see now it doesn't work anymore, see? Because the way the VLOOKUP works, let me just do that. The way the VLOOKUP works, it takes your lookup value and looks it up in the first column of your table array. You see, because we, let's go back there, we set the table array to be data clients A to B. So basically what the lookup, the, 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 the VLOOKUP does is basically it takes up your lookup value, which is basically the client name, and looks it up in the first column of your data set, of your table array. And then it says, oh, oh there he is, ABC. And, and now I return the, in, the, the content of column two. Where's column two? Column two is here. That's the content. This is what I return. You see? So that's the way VLOOKUP works. And that's why it's very important to have your lookup value and the first column in your table array of the same type. They gotta be of the same type of information. In our case, both consist of the client's name, all right? The, v, the lookup value is the client's name and the first column in our, v, in our uh, table array or data set is client's names, okay? That's very important to remember. Right, now I input the order quantity. Let's say I order uh, 57 units. Now I wanna need to calculate the price. Here again, I've got a table listing quantities and price. And here I only know the quantity. I need a price. Again, another classic case of VLOOKUPs. So again, function wizard and lookup and reference. Go to VLOOKUP. Okay, now what's my lookup value? What do I know about this order? All I know is the quantity. So basically, that's my lookup value. Where's my data set or my table array? It's basically here in data one, and I just do these two columns. Now, where's my where's the data? Where's the data that I need? Well, what do I need? I need the price per unit. So that's basically in column two, right? Column two. Now we come to range lookup. Right now, here comes again the question: Can an order exists between 1 and 10? Well, yes, it does, because you could order 5 units, or 7 units, or 6 units, or 3 units. Yeah? So, in this case, yes, there can be something between 1 and 10. So, in this case, we put in true. Right? And there we go. All right, I got like 12. And why 12? Because 57 is between 10 and 100, so I'm basically paying this price. Okay? If I put in another number like three six four now oh sorry I just overrode the formula here three six four now I'm paying nine and if you look at that three six four is basically between a hundred and a thousand so I'm paying the price for a hundred okay right now you see the difference between their two lookups here we have true for the range lookup and here we have false false means nothing can exist between two elements and that's true here you can't have a client in between two clients okay a further client would be just another client down here you just add them there's nothing in between whereas here with the price per unit we had true in here and that's because you could have an order you could have an order quantity between 1 and 10 or between 10 and 100 and so on so in this case in the VLOOKUP, you put in true, all right? So, one last fact. When you have VLOOKUPs, when you have VLOOKUPs like this one, where the range lookup is true, it's very important, extremely important, to have your data sorted in an ascending order by the first column, which means the data should be sorted 
by this column in an ascending order, which it is right now. You see 1, 10, 100, okay? Because if it isn't, you will get false results. Now let's try it out. I'm going here, I'm going to sort the data in a descending order, okay? Now it's in a descending order and you'll see I'm not going to get the right results. Now if I say I order like, I don't know, 1, I got an error. error. Whereas if I order 1, you know, I, the price should be 15, but I get an error. Why? Because the data is not sorted correctly. It should be sorted in an ascending order by that first column. Otherwise, otherwise, that VLOOKUP isn't going to work. Okay? Or if I type in here like 7, you'll see it won't work either. See? So that's very important. So that's why always when you do VLOOKUPs, you've got two things to remember. First, your your lookup value, your lookup value should be identical. It should be of the same type as the first column in your data set. That's the first rule we set. And the second rule is when you're using true as range lookup in your VLOOKUP, if you're using true, make sure that your data is sorted by the first column in an ascending order, which we're doing right now. And you'll see it will work perfectly. Okay, these are two important facts you have to remember about VLOOKUPs, and then you have no problems with VLOOKUPs. Right, and now we come to the final stage, which is like the easiest bit, calculating the invoice. Well, first of all, what does this guy has to pay? Well, he has to pay order quantity times price per unit, right? And now we have to take into account his discount, so I'm just going to put parenthesis, multiplied by... 1 minus his discount. So, and that's what he got to pay. Okay? And that is now a simple uh, purchase application where it takes it into account. You take into account the client's discount and his order quantity and the price per unit changes according to what the client orders. Now, if he orders 700, you'll see unit price goes down and that's his invoice. Okay? And in the next video, we're going to be dealing with a situation where, where we have multiple products. Because right here, we only have one product. In the next video, we'll be dealing with a, a, a situation where we have multiple products.